Thank you. I believe you have to read the statement as well again, right, Angela? Yeah, the statement from the chair. I just emailed it to you again, Meg, if you need it. Okay. And, and then, and clearly we can all hear you, but you're supposed to it, it just confirm that each of us are here and we can hear yes. you. I was just about to do all those things. Right. Um, I am trying to find the thing I'm supposed to read. Oh, yeah, here it is. Got it. Um, I get so much junk email that it's actually like the 15th email down. So pursuant to Governor Baker's, uh, first of all, I think I call the meeting to order first, right? I'm calling the meeting to order at uh, 3.32. And I'm gonna take attendance and then I'm going to uh, read Baker's statement. So Kathy Shane. Here. John Fenske. Here. John Page. Here. John McCabe. Yes, here. John Bowser, no. <laughs> <laughs> here. Angela Mills. Yes, I'm here with the caveat that I am the only person on the mezzanine today, so I'm popping in and out of the meeting and answering phone calls. Ay, ay, ay. Very and I'll note for the record that Liz is going to miss the meeting because of the, her husband's back surgery today. Um, and I'm going to read this statement pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order sustain, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 18, this meeting of the participatory budgeting commission is being held by a remote participation. Okay, and the significance there is that previously remote participation did not count as a quorum and now it does. Any questions about that? I want to appreciate Angela's amazing minutes and thank her for agreeing to do minutes again today. And I, when I asked you earlier today, I didn't know you were the only one on the mezzanine answering the phone. So let us know if it becomes too much of a burden, but Angela, you're a saint. Thank you. Okay, you're still able to do it? She's not there. Oops. <laughs> That's your answer. And Meg, that is the other virtue, what people, minute takers have been going back and watching the tape to the extent yes, they miss so it. Angela uh, did that for the minutes that she did because she had to leave the meeting early. So I'm, it's easier to take them live. So I'm doubly grateful to her for doing it um, if she can't actually be here, but I'll thank her again when she gets back on. Um, let's approve, uh, I wanted to review the agenda before we go further. And um, one thing I'd like to change on the agenda is that I, um, number um, eight, the timeline, I drafted that before I had uh, carefully read Kathy's memo. And there are numerous things that I would change on it right now. Um, also, John was very busy and wasn't able to collaborate. So I would like to take, we can look at it and discuss it, but it needs to be dramatically changed uh, based on what Kathy wrote. So I'm suggesting we eliminate eight or don't try to approve it. Okay, any other comments about the agenda? So uh, let's take a look at the minutes. Thanks again to Angela, are you back? I am back. Thank you for these awesome minutes. And while you were off, I thanked you for agreeing to take the minutes. And it's clear that you're going to have to use the video, but yes, thank you very much. No problem. You're an awesome minute taker. Um, so John Fenske and I have both made some changes based on our things that were related to what we had said at the last meeting. I didn't receive any other edits. So let me ask now, are, people, are there any changes people would like to make to the minutes. The reason I want to be really careful about amending and approving these minutes is that they're an excellent document of the consensus we reached, I think remarkably, after having not met for six months, uh, luckily having prepared statements that clearly people were prepared to give, but uh, I thought it was a remarkable uh, meeting and that we seem to reach consensus on what our plan is going forward. 
Um, <clears throat> and I want to be sure that everybody's comments are as they intended them, since this is the, I think, a cornerstone. These minutes are kind of cornerstone document of that agreement, and they're reflected carefully in Kathy's memo. Sure. Comments on the minutes. And I apologize, I pasted in John's section on page two and I didn't change the font, but that's okay. <laughs> Put on Arial 11. Any comments, edits? Everybody happy? Right okay, to me. hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Um, Meg, just I'm just reading them a little bit more carefully. Um, on the paragraph that on Shane opined, the Which last page? okay, the uh, second page, page two. Um, well, it's after Larson. Yes, yep. page two. Um, the last sentence noted that CDBG fund can be used for capital budgeting costs. Um, what I noted is that it can be used for social services. It's the only one that can. Okay. So you're um, changing capital budgeting costs to social service costs. Yes. Okay. And so, so just if you get rid of capital budgeting costs and then just delete, delete and say can be used for social service, it can also be used for capital, but it's the only one. The others um, cannot. So it can, for example, support the survival center operating costs. It can support... Um, assistance for getting a housing loan. I mean, it's it as opposed to building a house. Um, so it's just right. can be, so just change that. Okay, so we're, we're changing everything after the word for, we're deleting capital budgeting costs, thereby okay to use for. Great, yeah. any other changes, particularly to things that you said? <laughs> Um, well, just um, as you said, you focus on my own. Yeah. I'll look at the tape again, but my point was CPA funds could go toward resident proposals. I avoided ever officially calling this participatory budget. So CPA funds could go to resident proposals. Um, We're same, oh, same paragraph. It yeah. says, uh, so outreach, CPO, use volunteers, JCPC. CPA funds could go toward resident proposals instead of toward PB. Okay. So it's not, it's not a pot of money called PB. It's just, um, it, they, they're allowed to, they can go, you know. Right. But, it, but with CPA funds, they still have to fit within a specific criteria. Yeah, they yeah. So, to... so I had a little longer, you know, within fitting within the criteria. So it's not, this reads like we could just grab the money and put it someplace else. So I'll look at the tape on what I actually said. I know what I said in my memo in the earlier one, CPA funds can go toward resident proposals, you know, within the CPA categories is the whole sentence. So without objection, I'd be happy to make this change, suggest this change so we can approve the minutes without you having to go back and read, see what you said. But okay. if if you okay. feel that you'd be more, have more integrity for you to do that, I'm happy. Well, I, I think that's good because we wouldn't want to have something be inaccurate in the minutes. Right. Just because I didn't speak in a full sentence. <laughs> right. <laughs> I am a big believer in that. Right. Um, any other comments, particularly about things you said? <laughs> Again, I made a couple myself before I even sent it out. So, I mean, there's places where I would have hopefully wished I'd said things a little more elegantly than it looks like I did, but it, I corrected the things that I didn't think were accurate. So, okay, I'm looking around. Um, I just want to be sure that this format on Zoom gives everyone a chance to speak who wants to. So, I'm going to try to do more looking around or, you know, raise your hand if you have something to say. That and I'm not noticing. Um, so I was just going to say that um, I think I, I think I have some thoughts. I've thought more about it to what to elaborate on, but that wouldn't be part of the minutes. So as right. soon as we approve these, I have some 
some thoughts. Okay, great. Well, thoughts. Some of those can, uh, probably others of us do as well. And mm -hmm. uh, Kathy's written a fairly brilliant um, outline that will enable us, will give us the vehicle for doing that, I think. Perfect, yes. So um, hearing no comments about the minutes, all in favor of the minutes. I, I'm a, a motion to approve the minutes. Aye. No, wait, do I have to go around and say everybody's name, right, Angela? Oh, she's not there. Yeah, so I'm, I'm here. Do, okay. That would be lovely. Okay. Holly? Do you, yes. Meg, I'm going in the order I have my picture. Yes. John McCabe? John P? Yes. John Fenske? Kathy? Shane. Yes. Okay, unanimous. Perfect. Um, thank you. So next uh, on our agenda is uh, let you know that the council approved our request for an extension. I sent you the document. Any comments on that? Nope. Um, the uh, ranked choice voting uh, commission also got an extension the same amount of time. So Angela is going to, so we haven't, no one suggested changing the agenda order. So next on the agenda is the PowerPoint presentation that Angela has prepared with uh, Brianna and Jennifer uh, describing their work. And that was something that came up at our last meeting of people request wanting to know more about what they're doing, how much time they have and so on. So if this works for you, Angela, with your phone answering and everything, yeah, this is great. So I'm just going to quickly run through this. Um, CPOs, because we all need more acronyms in our life. CPO stands for Community Participation Officers, and this was created as part of the Home Rule Charter. There are three CPOs for the town of Amherst. Jennifer and I work on the mezzanine, and Brianna also works on the mezzanine. But in addition to the title of CPO, we have other job designations. So our official titles are as follows. Jennifer is split between HR and the town manager's office. Brianna, in addition to working for the information technology department, is also our communications manager. And my official title is, as you see, executive assistant to the town manager. And so this is um, section 3.3 from the home rule charter that speaks directly to the community participation officers. And so we each kind of have embraced a different um, pet project. Uh, when we meet as CPOs, Jennifer has really focused on high density populations in Amherst. I have focused on um, elementary school age through high school and then also the elderly population. And Brianna is trying to do the communications piece on every facet of our government and our populace. And then she also brings a wealth of knowledge from the outside. And as we host meetings and connect with the Attorney General's office and provide different um, avenues for enrichment in terms of workshops, we type up memos and Paul includes them in his town manager's report to the council on a bi-monthly basis. So this was Paul's report on the 17th of December in 2018 when he named all three of us as CPOs. And I just wanna make clear for this committee and also for anyone who's listening or watching that um, all three of us were invited to do this. We, we were asked and invited. And so we definitely see this as a passion project for each of us. It's not just another thing that we're shoving on our plate of things to do. So this is a quick rundown and I won't read through all of this, but as we look back over our work, um, it took a while for us to kind of get a feel for things and decide how and where we would put our energies. COVID has definitely invited us to think about outreach in a new way. And at this very moment, um, 
Jennifer just left to go set up a table at the mobile market at Fort River, which we've been trying to partner with the mobile market and reach people in different neighborhoods and give them masks and give them hand sanitizer and talk to them a little bit how about how things are going during the time of COVID and what they need from town government. So it's been great in terms of taking a temperature read and also it's been wonderful to hear how people are developing their own coping mechanisms. So as our ongoing mission, we look at community conversations, we look at public participation technology. Um, Brianna's working hard to integrate Bang the Table, which is a new kind of portal that will allow people to participate in projects and not necessarily do it real time. So you could offer your opinion on something like the North Amherst Library, but not necessarily have to write that down and save up an evening of your time to present your opinion at a meeting. You could enter in through Bang the Table and jot it on a virtual post-it note and add it to a bulletin board and then all of that feedback culminates into a report of some type and gets reflected back to the community. Excellent. Do you want us to ask questions as you go along if something's not clear or should we wait? Sure. No, that'd be great. Could you say another, a little bit more what the, the, you just mentioned the virtual tables? Yes. So uh, Brianna is working on technology enhancement and one of the new things that she's working on is a system, a platform called Bang the Table. It's a, it's, it's like, that's the brand name of the platform. And so what it would do is enable people to share their input and share their feelings about certain projects, but not necessarily on a timetable. So as I was saying, you could have a strong feeling about the North Amherst Library reconstruction project. And instead of going to a Zoom meeting or waiting for a Zoom meeting to happen, you could just go to this Right. being the table site and you could write down your thoughts or write down your presentation and that gets filtered into the project feedback. It sounds fabulous. It's not operational yet though, right? Very shortly. So oh, and I just wanted to add on that on the library, what Paul told me is as an example, if they get to if they convene a building committee and it comes up with a more detailed design instead of having everyone come to a public forum, they might still do that, you know, to Q and A back and forth. You can do it through this bang the table. So it, it makes it asynchronous with, while gathering all the comments or ideas. It's, I think it sounds fabulous. <laughs> so one of, me too, everything Kathy said. So my curiosity, which is probably premature, is how people are gonna find out about it and ideas for working with community groups so that they can spread the idea um, in applicable ways for each different organization or community group. It's very mm -hmm. exciting. It is very exciting. And so lastly, ongoing projects for CPOs, definitely more cultural events when we can gather together in large groups. And then we have our dedicated flag raisings for lots of different cultural and um, significant events. Great. Amherst Complete Census Count. This was kind of a passion project for Brianna. She worked very closely with Athena and the clerk's office to make sure that Amherst count was, is as complete as possible. And we did that lots of different ways. The summer care kits were a big hit. They went out to kids through the mobile meals project. And they included things like a tiny art kit and sidewalk chalk and hand sanitizer and a bag that said Amherst counts. And um, they were well received, which is great. And so we have our own page on the town website. It's the Get Involved page. And you can reach all three of us with one email address, getinvolved at amherstma.gov. And then there is a specific part of the website that is dedicated to COVID. And we have up to the minute um, case counts and then lists of resources at amherstcovid19.org and then we are also staffing the COVID concern line <laughs> and we have a dedicated email address covidconcerns at amherstma.gov which both have had a lot of use in the past month and a half. Those have been live since the end of August. 
So I guess it's almost two months, yikes. And finally, um, CPOs help support town councilors at uh, public events and also at district events. Um, and these are all the different ways that we do that. I just want to say this isn't a small um, task. So Angela, for example, when we were having real time district meetings, she created posters that we could stick up and made copies for me. So Sarah and I could carry it around and stick it up on bulletin boards, uh, did agendas. Um, and now that we're on Zoom, they're staffing the Zoom meetings. So it's it's, uh, there are only three of them and there are five districts. So I am assuming that they're doing double time because I know when I went to a district five meeting, they were helping run the video project, the projector to show some slides that people were putting up and carrying the materials back and forth to the meeting. So it is, it's, it's a labor of love, I guess is what I would call it, but, and totally valued. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. And so these are kind of our, as we looked ahead and we did some strategic planning, we would love to start a student civic group. And that was something that I worked on over the summer with our intern from Amherst College. Our intern was funded through the Houston program at Amherst College, and she did a great job of looking at best practices across lots of different um, municipalities. And then also she looked into the private sector to see what works best in terms of engaging youth and teaching them a skill set that they need to become great leaders. And our hope for the student civic group is to also get people involved in government and for kids to see government as um, a viable work pathway. And then Brianna, one of her passion projects would be to start a civic academy for residents. So for adults of any age to learn more about town government, and encourage active participation. And then the Civic Academy would also create an opportunity for residents to share their opinions. And that would take place through lots of different formats. Um, in pre-COVID times, we were talking about doing a, a trolley tour of all of the different municipal buildings so that residents could get a feel for how much the town of Amherst owns in terms of conservation land and DPW sites and all the different recreation areas because what we've discovered in our work with residents is that they're very knowledgeable about the specific place where they live, but not so knowledgeable about the other side of town. So kind of trying to connect people to different parts of town. And finally, our hope is that we can get neighbors to celebrate neighbors and really thrive on that small town feeling. And COVID has taught us that we are in fact in this all together. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Angela. I think this phone number is Liz. So if there's a way we can move her to panelists, sure. she'd be able to join us. Great. Um. So it's not giving me that option when I'm next to her name, but I can allow her to talk if you'd like me to. Maybe we can, is there, in the instructions on how to join us, um, do we have that we can put it up on the screen? Because I'm assuming she can hear us. And it's, there's that dial in way that you can dial in. Right, and I think well, that's I, what, I, I see, think if she dials in, she, if she dials in, you can't make her a, a panelist. A panelist, correct. Can you bring her into the meeting? I'm gonna text her too and see if she can is listening. Okay. Yeah, she, can, she can hear us. So if you if you'd like for me to allow her to talk, I'm just I'm happy to press on that. Okay. I see. So Liz, I've allowed you to kind of contribute if you'd like to. You just need to unmute when you're ready to speak. Great. Can and you so hear me? Yes. Yes. We can. yes. Okay. Success. All right, I'm here. Yay. Awesome. And I'm only on the phone, so I'm not seeing any slides. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're near your laptop, but the slides were sent out, but you can just listen and you'll get the gist. So I'm just loading for a minute. So it's no, I'm sitting in the parking lot at the, hotel, at the uh, hospital. Oh, dear. So it's 3.56 and, and uh, happily Liz has joined uh, by phone. 
Um, I had a, just quickly on that last slide, uh, Angela, really quickly, there's a national movement to lower the voting age to 16. Uh, this was something I tried to get in the charter, which didn't succeed, but uh, it's, um, there are a lot of resources around that movement that you can find online. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, um, we looked into that and it was um, hotly debated at one of our weekly meetings with our intern. Uh -huh. I was for it, she was against it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very much for it, but it's a, I, have, I don't still understand why it's controversial, but uh, having known many a 16 and an 18 year old, uh, but anyway. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so I, I think that brings me to the end of my slideshow. And I wanted to thank everyone for giving us an opportunity to kind of reflect on the work we've been doing. We don't often make time to do that. We just kind of plow through. So thank you. Are there any uh, questions? Uh, oh, how charming. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a comment. Um, it's just to observe that the, um, the slide that listed the responsibilities or the ro various roles of the community participation officers, the first three points seem to be at an abstract level, totally in sync with what participatory budgeting is about. That's all that I, I just want to note that. It oh, great. Seems to be Can we totally go lined up. The, the first three points, it was the, one of the earlier slides. Is it, would it be hard to go back and look at that? Not at all. That's a really helpful observation. So here we are, and I think you're talking about these three. I think you have to share your screen again. Oh, okay. I thought I did that. Hmm. Screen, share, sorry. Back, yeah. Yeah, that's it. One, two, and three, it seemed, Oops. seems to me are totally in sync at an abstract level with what we're trying to get accomplished. Yep, totally agree. Great. Thank so you. I just, I wanted to point out seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> catch all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> without comment. Pointed out without comment. Yes. Okay. Message received. <laughs> Smiles on the ground. No, because I don't think you even listed all of it. Because I know I'm pretty sure it is it um one of you are is the liaison to the human resources committee and is has got a title under not human no, not human human rights committee. Uh, the ones uh, chaired by Matthew Charity. Yes. So these are, there are other hats, which means they're staffing that meeting, but also an active participant as the staff person in town mm -hmm. supposed to worry about these issues. Yeah. Yes, that's Jennifer Boyston. That's Jennifer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Liz, did you just want, were you just raising your hand or starting to say something? Nope. Nope. Sorry. Okay. But just jump in when you'd have something to say. I have a question I, I will. for you, Angela. Yes. And that's how, how has COVID changed what you do? Because something I've been struggling since our last participatory budgeting meeting is all our recommendations are well and good. Um, but there are things the community participation officers were trying to do beforehand. And I'm not sure how you do them in a COVID world. It sounds like Brianna's exploring some technology that might help with that. But how has COVID changed what you do? So um, a lot of what we've done has shifted onto the Zoom platform. And so I'm present at this meeting. I um, also schedule and help coordinate the Zoom links for the agendas of several different 
commissions, committees, and boards. Um, there had to be someone who could get that stuff up and posted in time. And so we've added that kind of to the list of things to do. And then in terms of trying to build community by assuaging fear, we accepted the challenge to staff the COVID concern line. And tomorrow I'll spend a couple of hours training the ambassadors so that they can answer the COVID concern line in real time. And then it's, you know, it's taking the feedback from the public on these initiatives that we've started and, and trying to fine tune them. So the concern line, many people have comments and um, criticisms about the ambassadors and their role and their visibility. And it's giving that to the appropriate people and fine tuning it to meet the needs of, needs of our community. So we also spent the afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, I think, Monday afternoon at the Survival Center and um, Paul was with us. And as people were picking up uh, boxes of food, we tried to touch base with them and get them masks if they needed them, but also we're really focused on the rental assistance that's been made available through Community Action. And that second round has just opened up. And then we're also trying to connect people with other COVID related needs that will become more prominent as the moratorium ceases on the 17th of this month. Mm. It's really just finding ways to get out there and still be safe. It's a, it's a mm. tricky line to kind of walk and yet we're trying to walk it and, and make it real. No, it's, it's really impressive. It's, it seems to be the same challenge when I read, you know, kind of our recommendations, how do we engage people? Um, at least for now. Right. Are there other uh, observations or questions particularly related to what the topic of our commission? One of the things that's the biggest challenge seems to me in uh, uh, generating participation is uh, two things. One is for people to, to know about the opportunities uh, and then to understand second is to understand why it matters to them or what the benefits might be for them to participate and those are just enormous challenges with people when people are so busy and have so much going on So I, a, I just want to apologize for leaving the room, but I had to take that call. Sorry. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions about the uh, community participation officers? Now, the only comment I was going to make, Angela, is I thought that was a fabulous presentation. So I am going to recommend to Paul and Lynn that we do it once for the whole council. Oh, for sure. Thank you, Kathy. That's I'm nice to hear. You haven't already done that? Nope. Wow. Second that moment. Everybody, I think we all agree. Thumbs up by everybody. Great. Yeah, it's a fabulous presentation. And the thing to get it on public television or get it, I don't know, just so people know you that you're there and can start to see ways that you could be helpful. That's the challenge. It's easy to get people involved who are already involved. <laughs> okay, now we're moving with no more, seeing no more comment to the big topic of the meeting, which is a discussion of Kathy's uh, ex excellent outline. She calls it an outline. I call it a, it's a paper. It's an outline. I thought we could start. Kathy, I don't know if you want to say anything before we start. I was going to suggest that we start with people, if people have any clarification questions. Uh, but do you want to, uh, Kathy, why don't you say, do you have some? Yeah, I would just say a few words. Um, I sent, in it, when I sent it back to Meg, I just did a one sentence, but I tried to capture people's words um, or concepts where I could as I went through, because when I went back and listened to the tape, Liz, I, you weren't on when I first said this, but I, the fact that these are being videotaped has been very helpful 
because I had taken notes, but I could see where we had a lot of agreement in certain areas and where people were also offering ideas that were like a part B or a part C. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure I understood the difference, for example, between John McCabe's part B and John Fenske's because they were different conceptually. And so, um, and then Meg sent me the document that she read to us. So I wanted to capture some of those words about what do we mean about meaningful participation. So this was authored by me, but I think of it as a group effort is the way I would uh, talk about it. Um, so I had Liz's words, or at least when she was saying, I like what the way you said that or something. So um, I want to just thank everyone for that last meeting, because I think people came with a lot of thought um, and Holly's, you know, what can we do? We were enthusiastic. Where are we going? So this, I, this to me is a working outline and I didn't probably put enough on a, not sure we can do this. We would have to check whether this is legal. Not sure, you know, X, Y, and Z, um, how to carry some of this off. Um, and that Meg ultimately will work back to your timeline of when we do what. Um, some of these things may not be possible with the way a particular process is already set up. So we would have to figure out how to um, make that, some of the, the concepts in this, it's clearly some things are easily, some things are not easy. So I didn't put enough of those, not sure this is legal, not sure whether we'll need a bylaw here, not sure, you know, kinds of little mm -hmm. things. So that's all I want to say is the overview of putting it together. Great. And I'll say again what I said at the beginning before Liz got on. Thank you, Kathy. This is really helpful. And I think we had a remarkable meeting, as you just said, in that we seem to come from different places and reach the outline anyway of consensus. Um, the question about what's legal and not, there are different levels of that. Uh, some, something could be uh, need a bylaw change or uh, approval by the council. Sometimes things need to go to the Massachusetts legislature. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I just said, if we yeah. like what's on this page, one of the things would be, you know, before we write a lot of words about it, say what, what if anything would it take to make this possible? And we could talk to Paul or and or CPA is governed by a statute, um, for example, and it has a committee that's authorized. So it's it's sort of that interaction. We don't want to put a concept on where someone says you actually can't do that. Um, um, and and on, or we get a you could do this if the following X, Y, or Z. So that's uh, this is just my caveat that to me I see no reason why this wouldn't be in theory possible other than it might not be possible because of the way the statutes are framed. Um, so. Great. So let's, let's just go around and give everybody who wants to a chance to ask any clarifying questions or make overall comments. So Meg, do you want to put it up on the screen? So um, if people want to say on page two or whatever, or. She had one of those. No, she hasn't. Um, you, I can share the, my screen, I think. Let me. Yeah, I just think if people want to do, however people want to do it, but then they can say, you know, I didn't understand this or I don't agree with this, but they could re reference some piece of it. Right. Let me see if I, let me pull it up. Let's see, introduction. Okay, now let me share my screen. Okay. Well, let's see if, first of all, people have. Um, Uh, John Page has his hand up. John, why don't you, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm tempted not to share the screen until we see what general comments people have, but John Page. Sure, so I first want to thank Kathy. This is a really great start so that we have something to work from. That's such important structure. And I kind of envision, we probably will have a maybe a goal section where we do talk about what is authentic participation and engagement um, Meg, you have some great oh. language on that that I think would be perfect. And then I almost view A, B, and C, which I think those three buckets really captured what we talked about as strategies. 
Um, and building on what you just said, Kathy, my one fear, well, two fears. One, the COVID piece that I mentioned, um, this is temporary, but I, I, I just wonder, it's awkward to talk about this during this time. But the second one was, my only hesitation is around with CPA and CDBG, um, where I think there's a lot of room for new engagement and, and increasing participation. I would hate for us to get to May and then say to these hardworking committees, we have suggestions about how you do your work. Um, so maybe we can, and this, this would get to the schedule, but maybe we can bring them in and incorporate them in some way so that we're not telling them our thoughts about their hard work, but we're helping to um, increase the participation in right. it. So this gets, this raises the question that we're gonna probably not talk about in much of, of our timeline and when we engage people in the process of writing a final report, which people and how we do it and uh, how we frame it. Other comments? I, I felt yeah, that- I, I just want, to, do you want it to be interactive at all? You yes. know, what John just said? Um, yeah, I, totally, I totally agree with what you just said and thinking about these as strategies and uh, talking sooner rather than later before what I was trying to say is before we put a lot of words on a piece of paper you know having an informal discussion because CDBG is a good example it's a specific thing it's uh, got all sorts of guidelines they go through public hearings on it so people might say we'd love to get more ideas and that's and keeping the position open longer, but that's about as far as we can go. We still have to be the decision makers because it goes up to the governor. It has to, you know, so it might be some of these, some of our concepts would work well with and others maybe not. So if we want, the, you know, within, these are both within A, but if we want those, we all like them, then kind of trying to tease it out a little bit before we, go much further on it because maybe CDBG gets dropped or put in in a very different way. Mm -hmm. You know, that two things can happen this way, this is gonna happen differently. Um, so I just, I think, and then strategy B and strategy C, you know, all of these are like, how do we any, do any of them right now? But, um, <laughs> so I do think flushing each of these out a little bit more, but within A, doing something earlier if what's what stays on the page to explore. Um, and I raised already under the capital budget and is this is in the town manager's domain. It's not even in the, we can decrease it, but not movement. So there would have to be some, would there be agreement? Could there be agreement? Meg, you're wondering, can there be voting? Like, do we hit a stone wall? So just trying to have those conversations before this gets bigger first. Um, yeah. Um, and that's why I'm exactly why I'm proposing we not discuss the timeline too much because there are implications for changes that aren't even worth our time. To, they're yeah. so obvious that they need to be made, the proposed timeline. Um, with screen sharing, I can't see everybody at the same time. Other comments? Meg, Meg, let me just tell you, you can. You can go up. Uh, oh, there's, there's one of the ways to view, and you can make... Got it. Yep. I just don't see Liz's phone that way, but... Yeah, Liz's phone is the... You can't see a phone. Well, before I saw her phone. Yeah, I, I don't see her phone either. Are, are there other general... Thank you for that, Kathy. Are there other any other uh, comments or ob initial observations? I feel that uh, one little small thing that it, we, we need to more explicitly acknowledge the pandemic, that we're operating in this dramatically changed climate that has every kind of implication for the town and the budget, and uh, that we need to refer to that and think a little bit about what can be done in this climate and what could be done in this climate that could leave doors open down the road 10 years from now or whatever for something else. But that suggests a whole other uh, section, but that's one of my thoughts as I read it. 
Well, were we thinking that at some point we would suggest that it be revisited in like five to seven years? So could that be the door that's left in there? Something, yeah, I don't want to say now what it is, but I just think the pandemic uh, changed everything. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't think of a worse project to be doing during a pandemic <laughs> than this because of the, what it's done to our town budget. And uh, it's just the desperate needs of our downtown businesses and so on. But there's something like that, Liz. I agree. I think that's, you know, and, and it could probably be in two places. It could be early on. Yeah. The, the town just had to cut way back on what we spend in every, we have a revenue shortfall. And then toward the conclusion, revisit five to seven years. You know, I mean, I can see in two places that we're in extraordinary times. Mm -hmm. So my only, and, and I would want to, you know, we figure out how to write it, but um, I think this is partly because I'm a liaison to the community develop block grant and it's got money and I'm worried it doesn't have good proposals. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, maybe in extraordinary times is when you do some extraordinary efforts to bring the residents in, like give us your idea, you know, pound the pavement a bit more, um, uh, do some support. If people have a great idea, help them flush it out because I, you know, Last year, 400,000 of the 1.1 million went into a reserve because they didn't have enough good projects. So it's available for this year, it didn't go away. But there's a tendency then, if it's not a bad project to let it in, you know, so of the projects you have, if you can fund 10, why not fund 10 if that's all you get kind of thing. So the extraordinary time when we write it up, I think could have be written in two, two ways here. Um, this is a good time to be inviting people in where we can um, and to make oh. it make it feel like people have a voice. Great. Yeah, I, I, just a clarification. <laughs> is the CDBG money no. in any way use it or lose it? It. Uh, can I just, I think that Kathy said CDBG and I think that Kathy meant CPA. Yeah, I meant CPA. If CPA, I meant, sorry. Oh, I meant okay, so CPA, is it? You, you said it went into a reserve. I was just it, curious to know if you don't use it all in one year, do you get allocated less the next year? No, it's, it's, it's a surcharge. The way it's funded, it's a surcharge on our property taxes. So whatever our property taxes each year raise a certain amount of money. And then the state puts in some additional money based on, and Holly, correct me, because you know this better, the, they put in some additional money based on the year before. So we get, it was a higher match earlier on. If you don't use it, if the town explicitly says we're reserving it for general, all the purposes, it's there. So we technically get more to spend the following year, but we have to spend it. So we, you, you want it, you don't, like you can't, build it up to have millions and millions and millions of dollars, but you don't, it's not a use it or lose it each year. Mm -hmm. so that's comments? also, Excuse, go ahead. Uh, that's also important because there for CPA, there are the different categories and there's rules about how much you can use for each category. So if you've got a year, so there's housing, open space and recreation and historic preservation. If in a single year you got no um, historic preservation, applications there would there there would be a requirement to reserve some of that right. again a future this project. is this is the cpa and it's 10 percent for the three biggies but if one year you get spent a lot you can do an average and so for example mm -hmm. with with historic this year this past year we didn't spend up to the full amount so there was explicitly 50,000 reserved for historic. So it wasn't just a general reserve, you all come um, to, to meet that bottom line. But so in one way to think about it, there's 10, 10 and 10, but 70 is, could go anywhere. That's hard. Um, wow. That was within, within, the, within the categories, it can't go toward, <laughs> it can't go toward build a school. <laughs> Holly, thanks I for the clarification because I was a little confused. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. CPA. 
-hmm. Too many acronyms. I did want to jump back to what Liz said, which was ironically, and I think this is what we're struggling with a little bit, we don't, uh, we don't render a decision on participatory budgeting yet in this. So at some point we should look at our charge and make a statement, which I think we came to somewhat of a conclusion is, this is a good thing, but a formal participatory budgeting process is just not gonna work at this time, but we strongly encourage or whatever language is appropriate to revisit. So I think that definitely will have to be in here because we don't, and I, unless I, I might've missed it, but we don't explicitly say that. So somewhere we'll have to commit that that's where we fell because that's our charge is to kind of render a, a decision. I think I read it, I read it, wrote it subtly later, John, but if it didn't jump out at you, it's rather than the official, we're going to build on things we have here, but, but it should be an official. There is something known as this thing, this animal, and we, we are not a variant of it. We're something different, um, and we can explain why, yeah. But I actually disagree. Uh, I think participatory budgeting has many, many different forms. Right. right. The key if we're still, you know, under B, the thing for me that's, is the B on page one, uh, some effective way of giving people participation and decision making. That's, that's what participatory budgeting is all about. And we don't know if we can do that yet, but we haven't taken that off the table. And I would just say that first sentence I wrote, it is the wording, it is, Propose a measure to adopt participatory budgeting or other methods of re re resident participation in the budgeting. You know, it wasn't a, a stylized thing, Meg. I agree. It's written very broadly to be. Purpose, or it wouldn't have passed. It was the only way, you know, it was controversial. It was written very broadly. So I would not say we haven't yet. I would feel strongly that we are not ready to say we haven't fulfilled that, what Kathy quoted there in that first uh, sentence right up here. I think, well, I think I would agree. I wouldn't want this to be used as justification for never looking right. into a formal PB process is right. I think is what I was trying to articulate in Thank the future. I mean, that was really so, important to note what you just said. Liz. Okay. So yeah, building on what John was saying and what Meg was saying, um, and is, do we put in the introduction somewhere that, you know, we, started this process, we were looking at various forms of uh, participatory budgeting, but then the pandemic hit and given all of the circumstances, we, our committee is moving in this direction for a recommendation. Here's why, here's what we liked about things, here's why we would go there, but also don't wanna close the door for changing it down the road. Mm -hmm. And put that in the introduction to explain what we were doing why we're going this direction Great. because of the pandemic. Great. I, I think definitely, and it's, well, we can look at this as we actually start uh, team writing. I, I always have a preference and it's probably because someone threw, threatened to throw my 50 page document in the trash can. <laughs> Unless, no. I, <laughs> unless I could have a one page summary that told me exactly what I was recommending. And so it was uh, like, do some quick summary and then go into how did you get there? So it's, I absolutely, Liz, agree with what you just said. So if we can keep it short, but I wanted to, and it was really, uh, if you are a busy, this was at the federal level, if you're busy X, Y, or Z, if you can't tell them what you want to do on the first page, clearly, they won't read it if you entice them in, you know, so it's, it's, I think we should do something here and then we should do something more because we actually reviewed a bunch of towns and cities. We did a lot of thinking. We didn't just, you know, start out going here um, and talk about what we did. So I'm taking notes because it can certainly go in the introduction. Um, and this isn't meant to be an executive summary here. It could be called anything. <laughs> I started to call it an overview, and I didn't know what it was. I just had to start. So, John, I like the uh, a video went like funny, and he's going to join again any minute. Sorry, Liz. Liz. So, I, I like, sorry, Kathy, I like that re uh, the idea of the executive, the one page abstract. Here's what you're going to find if you choose to read in further. So, 
just in terms of formatting, I think that that's uh, very helpful. Great. I wish I'd worn earrings that made noise when I'm nodding my head here so you could hear me. <laughs> ring a little, if you have a little bell in the car, ring the bell. <laughs> so I have a process question, which would be, I think we have some great ideas, but, um, and I think Kathy, you mentioned group, group writing. How do we um, contribute to this in a way that works with open meeting law? Because I would love to, to be helpful in uh, adding to it. Um, we've, in a couple of the times I've been in open meeting law trying, so we just went through the percent for art rewriting the bylaw. We did a group review like we're doing now. Um, and uh, whoever had a pen and pencil was taking copious notes on a, add this here, change this there. And two of us were delegated to go and come up with a second draft. Um, and it was always brought back with track changes and comments about why this or that was changed. So you could watch its, which, watch its evolution. And then the group was looking at that. And um, that was just, it was, I shouldn't say just a group, it was five people, but um, that seemed to be fine. Then the other one we were in, in, I was in, which was the rules of procedure that the council was going to live by. Um, uh, there were a bunch of us and strong personalities, and we came up with a, a structure, which you said, you know, here's the outline of what we're doing. People dropped in ideas in a shared document that we could see. We came back and we talked about it. And then someone was delegated to write up the section, you know, say, why don't you take a stab at part two or part five? And then that came back as here's the document. And that we had, a, we had 10, 10 different areas in that document. And it ended up only two of us were really doing much writing because it just became easier to keep version control. So cope, but everyone knew they had dropped in because you, you're allowed to drop in comments, just not talk about them outline. So you could come in and show where I, I would change this, I would change that, but you couldn't talk together except for the people who were told, go firm this up. So that was two different models. One was two people. We literally sat in the same room and said, here, there, and I don't like your sentence. Here's my sentence. And one of us was typing and the other was chatting. And then the other one was totally separate, but a different section. Someone was going to draft the section. And then this next meeting, we looked at the section. So those were the two models I had where we did group writing mm -hmm. um, oh. in, in public. <laughs> it seems to me the of the those two see if john if you agree uh the first at this stage this is at that having two people work on all would be the better way to go what do you think kathy and john either makes sense to me um because john i'd be happy to work with you and i I'm just looking at it on the screen right now. I, I did buy a second monitor, so I could have my own document open and be doing comment bubbles on each of these. But right now I don't have the ability to do that, but that's, I'm doing it on a page. You know, this, do some, add something here, uh, put goals somewhere, you know, say sooner goals, mm -hmm. COVID. Um, yeah, so. I'd be happy to, you know, once we figure out what do we do, want to do with this document to um, team, team write with you where in any way you wanted to, that would work. John, are you up for that? Yeah, I, I can volunteer for that. Um, and we'd of course bring it back to the committee. So yeah. then we'd get more, more changes and it would evolve over time. So uh, let's then give more comments if we have them. I have a couple I've been sort of holding back. Do other people have comments they want to, questions or comments about the excellent draft? Holly? I just want to say that I very much appreciate it because I am way better with numbers than I am with words. And so I would not volunteer for that committee. <laughs> <laughs> so 
it's great. And it, and it seems to faithfully reflect what people, you know, I mean, you, you just drop the, drop the stuff in. Um, I'm happy to have you guys do that. But in, if, and then if you want, you could admit, could, couldn't the co-writers request as you're going along and say, I really need more clarity on, so, you know, something that someone has contributed go back to that person and say, give me more, you know? Yeah. Well, that, I w that would be fabulous. That was this and other. So on B and C, you know, one came from you and one came from the other, John. Um, I'm trying to remember, John McCabe, you were the one I had an exchange with, correct? You know, you. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you just dropped, you know, the, said, you dropped the verbiage right in. And I, no, it was like, you know, Grant supported, get UMass more involved. And I said, do you have any more to th not thinking about this? And you said, not yet, you know, but it's yeah. like, this is like, this was as far as I could get on that. And if it, yeah. I, you know, so. Um, I think if we, over time, I'll think about it. This is, this is more like, uh, I think this is because Meg and I talked to, to these different towns that were college towns. I would want to make it um, more, op I think more open-ended. It isn't just like looking for a grant or something. It's just looking, for, uh, looking, for, looking at this. Uh, uh, I think it's a great idea to use our current funding streams but I think if we just talk about that, we, we, it's almost like we're not asking to do anything. If we could add, you know, sort of tickle Paul's creative funny bone, you know, and say, what else could we do with this? You know, we, there's probably lots of things we could do. So I'm, I'm sure we can figure that out. And, and that to me is a good example of that's not quite right, this thing called C. And so re, rework it yeah. to be something that was closer to what you were thinking about, but also with a little bit more meat on its bones, because I can guarantee you that Paul Bachman won't be the one doing it. It's going to have, you know, it's going to be at some other level of volunteer committees or who knows what, you know, to, right. yeah. So, so C was one of the points that if I was going to ask about if we want to keep going with the, the content. Just, I think it definitely needs, I'm glad this, that you all feel it needs more clarification. There were several things about it that I didn't understand. Uh, like, is it college the students? Does that refer to college students? Could. I mean, I'm, I left it really open-ended. It seems like, I mean, what we discovered, Meg, was that there, there's, there's academic interest in, in participatory, right. participatory budgeting out there. So there's an opportunity there for perhaps we have, perhaps we have people in public policy and poli sci and who knows what else. Uh, chances to pull in both faculty and students to uh, to to help um, man some of this because we, we don't have a lot of money. But I'm also just curious uh, in, in terms of the in terms of our budget hole that we we will face. I, I would say to Liz, I just I, I don't want to say that we that we we should punt this down the road seven years. Um, it might be uh, it might be that in a few years some of our better endowed college friends around here might might want to help the town somehow and this might be a mechanism for doing it you know also the one of our district one neighborhood association meetings uh we learned that there are hundreds and hundreds of students involved in community act community act involvement uh i can't i attempted to say thousands but that's probably not i can't remember the number but there are numerous, you know, the survival center totally depends on college students. Uh, there's just a, a resource that uh, we can think more creatively about. Yeah, they can do it for credit. They can do it for fun. Um, they could do it as part of a class curriculum. You know, there's, there's so, so many different ways it could go. Right. When I was on this Puffer's Pond Committee, we got these students to do this astonishing study of the uh, biology of pond and the, the botany of it as well it was amazing what they put together as a uh, presentation for us with just for college credit yeah. <laughs> if you look down to the last page not last page second to last where i tried to expand on this not the abc but get into c i mean that's the section i'm saying expand on this because I didn't use the word grants as often. It's, you know, it's harness some of this energy and I didn't restrict it on who the students would be, Meg. So this is, it could be grant supported. Um, your, John, you use the word more entrepreneurial thinking. I just was literally winging it in here. Yeah. Well, um, 
it's probably yeah. should be a little wingy because it's just <laughs> sort, of, it's sort of a this is a sort of speculative suggestion you know it's it could be lots of things yes um, it's, it's like we're just trying to get people to think I'm not going to say outside the box. I hate it when people say that, but you know. Just no, and so that's where it's what sparked global interest. So it could be seed money. So I didn't want to turn any, but it was like, how is seed different than a few other things? So this is a really good example of not, I don't want to use the word, word you know, making this get closer to it, whatever the idea is. Um, I yeah. That the, you have the longer section, like around page three or four, I can. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And you know, so copy and pasting whatever is here and then saying that's a start, but maybe you want to start all over. Yeah. Um, send it, I'll send it to you. You can punch it back in or whatever you want to do with it. Right. And it doesn't need to, even on this, I said with foundation or grant support, maybe they're all volunteers. So I didn't necessarily mean it. But I think a lot of, I think, you know, professors get their graduate students or their undergraduates involved and they might get town students. And when they turned it to a student project where they have to report back on it, it's a double win. Um, yeah. Yeah. And just in general, I think that we don't partner enough with our with our five colleges. I mean, really, I, I think when I count them off, there's more like 12 colleges. But, um, you know, the colleges are happy to be left alone and just, just no I'm not going to say that. But I mean, we, <laughs> I, well, because they, you know, I think they should be putting more, I think they should be giving more back to the town. Uh, I don't know that they necessarily agree with that, but the, here's a way that you can reach out to them as well in a, in a positive way, you know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can, but I, I think it should just be a, a, a list of possibilities, not a direct proposal, because I, I guarantee you that the entrepreneurial folks out there in, in on the academic side, they, they, they could bring, they could bring, um, if you give them an opportunity, they might bring something to it. I don't know. And I also think here, you know, uh, currently it's written as two paragraphs. You're listing, I love bullets, you know, when we don't have a fully fleshed out, here are some ideas or something, dot, 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 um, is a good way of saying we don't have answers. <laughs> yeah, I just have, just possibly, you know, just, just, it's like a thought experiment. What, what could we, what, 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 what else could this thing turn into, you know? Mm -hmm. I've often used the phrase leverage resources yeah. um, when talking about the colleges and universities because those can be everything from technology, um, which can sometimes, as we know with Zoom and everything else, be very expensive, but from technology to people power to financial, of course. Um, so I've used that term leverage resources as a kind of broad catch-all. Sure. Um, a couple, I have a, 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 on page four, I wanted to ask uh, Kathy, could you, you had said um, this uh, drafting note, John Fenske remarks need to expand. Could you say a little more about that? So John. Uh, okay, so he said there's, if we want to get people right more here. generally involved and he's, he's, on the, he's on the video. So, but what he was, my understanding, John, of what you said was there's a more general set of issues that's not just carving out a piece of money, but early on, before we're about to do something, do a referendum in a way that, could, that we really find out what people's priorities are, um, whether it was voting or something. And I just plugged in a couple examples. I think you uh, talked about the police as an example, but there was also the big building projects that you in your remarks talked about if we are going to, we think we are going to need to do a tax override, go out really early to talk about the choices we face and why do we think we need to do this and what is it anyway? Um, so you had some good examples and I didn't know whether you meant to my mind, you know, we had these listening sessions and I so much wished rather than a couple hundred people or even 150, because some people came to all of them. So I don't know how much we double counted. I wished we had said, we have four projects. We're gonna explain them to you. We've got short videos. Can you tell me your top priorities? One, two, three, and four. And that I got 7,000, 10,000 people weighing in on 
if I could only do one, this is the one I would do. If I could do two, these are the two I would do. Um, rather than the listening sessions revealed those priorities, but I thought we had them from such a small a number of people. Mm -hmm. um, and so you would influence council decisions in a big way about these. And right now, we have such a budget crisis, we're going to need to know that there's, there's a support for whatever kinds of choices are made. Um, so uh, that's what I heard you saying. So yeah. I threw these two in, not knowing where to go with it again, you know, not knowing how to expand it. Um, so I could, you know, just go over some of the things I tried to say, maybe add a couple points. Um, this is not a, a well thought out proposal on my part. I think you're giving it more form in in under your explanation of point B than than I had in mind. But um, <clears throat> you've hit on some of the, the highlights. I think of this uh, generally, and again, I, my starting point is I've seen what we've talked about is participatory budgeting, what's done elsewhere. It's a kind of a lure. It's a pot of money that's put out there to stimulate citizen participation. I think that's all great. The things I've heard are wonderful. I'm just trying to get us to think a little more broadly and see if, if the rest of you are on board for such a concept. And what I mean by thinking more broadly is, uh, for example, and this is going to pretty much what Kathy was just saying, it's helping town council and the town manager to have a continuously updated, better understanding of citizen priorities. And that might be some kind of continuous polling. I mean, we don't have enough money or energy or time to do this, but what, what would it mean? You know, what would it mean to do uh, regular continuous uh, polling of, of residents on, on important topics? Uh, there are related issues. I mean, then there are the, you know, the things that, um, uh, the, the hot button items that are already out there, the police, green technologies, uh, staffing issues such as with the firefighters, uh, benefits for library part-timers. Uh, those are all things that come up. They kind of get discussed for a while, batted around, but nobody has a real sense of where the consensus, if you could call it that, or the, uh, uh, you know, the bulk of opinion in town is on, on, on such a matter. Um, uh, the referenda uh, overrides, those are especially important. Uh, and not to forget uh, people, um, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm people who would rather see taxes stay level or go lower. Uh, you know, are, are these issues addressed at all? Um, let's see. Uh, I mentioned as well in, in the notes, I, I think I made it a little clearer in my, my edit, that I think town council compensation is a really hot button issue. It's sort of, uh, you know, can the council vote itself a raise? Forget it. Uh, I mean, they'd have to ultimately, but uh, this is an issue about how uh, how much we're willing to pay for our government and what we think uh, they should be doing and how much time they spend. Um, you know, and anyway, it's it's just something that I think partic good participatory budgeting would help the leadership of the town to uh, know how to go about it. Um, and then I had a point that was maybe a little more detailed. It has to do with... Um, uh, helping the public to enter into budgetary discussions more quickly. I mean, I, I've had myself a lot of experience with budgeting for projects and I can read spreadsheets. I think maybe the kind of people or even the, the bulk of the citizenry uh, don't have that much experience and could use some, uh, some help in getting into it. I don't mean just posting these things online. Uh, I mean, for example, um, having a regularized, uh, standardized, uh, helpful public budgeting math. What do I mean by that? I mean things like uh, giving price tags for significant items. And by a price tag, I mean showing it as a percent of operating or capital budget, uh, the impact on the tax rate or on the typical median tax bill, and also and especially benchmarking. I know this is done in some areas. I find these discussions very interesting. And uh, it would be helpful to know what uh, best practices are elsewhere, what percentage of a town budget, uh, uh, a comparable Massachusetts town budget is devoted to the kind of thing that we're, that's under discussion. 
Um, and then I mentioned as a side point that there's this perennial thorny issue in town. How do we count the students as part of the population? Uh, I noted that there are some discussions of per capita expenditures that seem a little strange. And I think it has to do with the issue of of uh, the, the year-round residents versus the student to population and the special expenditures associated with, with the universities. So that's the random pot of ideas I had along these lines that I think didn't fit clearly into uh, what's called participatory budgeting elsewhere. But I think I'd, I'd like us to you know, think it through and it might require some real nitty gritty work to get um, uh, some of these useful tools or useful ways of helping the public get into d discussions more quickly or how to do continuous polling. Voila. No, John, I didn't, clearly I didn't, there's a reason I did hear you talk about counselor, counselor pay and that I didn't put it in as a bullet, bullet for <laughs> probably. Well, no, but that's, that's exactly what I'm talking for, about. No, but for clear, for clear, for clear reasons. But one thing you just said, I thought, if I think back to Angela's slides, that civic engagement they had with the adults and residents on the uh, a, a more a better understanding. We did um, we did a tiny bit of this once up here with the neighborhood association and the North Amherst on what's in our budget, how much goes for what, where do we have any wiggle room. Um, and most people had not seen anything like that. I mean, I just very, it, it was simplified, but tried to be interactive and back and forth a little bit. And it was, you know, even with uh, this much goes here, if we want to do more money there, it would be this many fewer people working in the school system or something, you know, that it's money doesn't grow on trees kind of feeling like, um, but it, I thought, there wasn't any place to go for any of that information. You know, I just worked up a bunch of things and we did a back and forth, but something like that would probably be really helpful if people wanted in some way to engage with this stuff conceptually. Yeah. Thank you, John and Kathy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to make any other, I want to make a comment, but I, invite anybody else first. Somewhere up here in section A, I had a, um, a I sort of, I guess instead of suggest, suggest an idea that not where it should go necessarily, we could make a big contribution by uh, encouraging uh, active engagement of the many, many different community groups, um, both those that are part of government and those that are independent. Um, because I think that's how, when people join an organization, they join it because they're interested in it. And um, that's the place where you can get their attention often. The Charter Commission had uh, these listening sessions and we decided to have one with specific outreach to seniors and we worked through the Senior Center and we had about 40 seniors and heard all sorts of things that I had never heard before in terms of what worked in the town and what didn't work in terms of, uh, of course, it didn't really relate to the charter. It was things but uh, pavements that were uneven, and, um, the inadequacy of the kitchen and the senior center. Uh, but we engaged them in the charter process by going to them and listening to what their concerns were. And I've, I'm still blown away that a, a new senior center doesn't appear anywhere on any of the capital plans, but I'm not going to bring that up, that's for sure. But uh, uh, but there, that's just one example, this Big Brothers, Big Sisters. The Meg, where would, would you put them under your, in general, in A, I'm listening, um, would this be part of the outreach, making people aware of what's available, using groups like that? Um, yeah. Go out to them, so in that section that follows later, that's outreach, getting the word out, um, with yeah, that's that. exactly where I wrote it in my copy, right in here. Okay. okay. I'm just see this right here. The yep. part is my cursor show. Yep. In Great. my my handwritten, I've handwritten right all a lot of that right in here, but I'm not necessarily saying it would go there. But I think. Uh, but isn't if you scroll down, didn't 
I might have forgotten it. It's like, how could we do outreach? But I might not have done very much on, we could expand on how could we do the outreach? So it's not just Angela and the two CPOs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So whatever program we propose, it builds in outreach to the myriad community organizations that people have joined because they have an interest in something related to our town, either they're seniors or they're low income or they're taking they're spending a afternoon a week with a child who who needs you know with the big brother big sister um there are latino organizations or there are it's just tons of different um they're more now like i think four different racial justice groups that are of different but i i think you're let me see but i think there are two ways you're talking about this both who, whoever's at the core of this activity is reaching out to them, but they then are saying, hey, there's an opportunity next year. Let's, t let's brainstorm about some ideas, come up with our own possible projects. So they would be also a place that might be gener generating ideas or proposals. Yes? Right here where my cursor's going, this section here. Yep. Expand that. That's all I'm saying. Yep. And I know that the uh, CPOs have a great list of those organizations. Angela showed it to me once. And uh, some of them have uh, listservs. Well, all of them have listservs. They're also neighborhood. They're probably about, I don't know, 15 or so neighborhood email lists. There may be more than that. But, you know, the people who live up, or up uh, uh, by Atkins Reservoir, they have one. And a lot of neighborhood, the Amherst Woods has one uh, email lists for reaching okay. people with information that they might not otherwise hear. Meg, I have to go. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just... Yeah, I'm, maybe, I'm maybe being called you know. away. Oh, I see. That kind of have to go. Yes. Okay. okay. Going on in the kitchen. John, <laughs> um... I'll put it down. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, please. Yes, go ahead. So if you have comments on the... Uh, you can email them to me on the meeting schedule. Is it next week or, or is it for the Well, we've been doing it every two weeks, so I proposed. I'm fine with it every two, sure. And then I did some dancing around Thanksgiving and Christmas, the holidays. Okay. It's all good. I'll, I'll send you something, Kathy, in the next, before the next meeting. Um, I'm okay. pretty busy, but I, I mean, I'll, <clears throat> it'll still be pretty vague, but I'll, I'll try to add some more stuff. That's fine. Um, so shall, go ahead, Kathy. I think said so, that's fine. I just said that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So shall we, do people have, I think any of us can send emails to Kathy and John, right? So do we, anything else anyone would like to say in front of the group? Well, I guess, let me, I have a question. Um, we have some great specific ideas of things that are missing completely from this right now, including John's goals. And then we have some specific, and Liz bring COVID back in and also talk about the future and your talk about the future. Um, and also Liz talked about things we considered but then didn't do or because of. So I have some specifics of what to add back in. Meg's comments right now were a couple of the bullets need a paragraph or more written about them on ideas of how you might do it. Mm -hmm. So what I would think is maybe um, for the next time we look at this, if John and I try to draft some new things to bring in um, and maybe just try one expansion on this, but everyone come back with, um, you know, I didn't want to be I couldn't be too prescriptive. I didn't have much time to write this. So, um, you know, I think any of these bullets probably can have another paragraph underneath them on how would you do that? How would you do that? If we're trying to get beyond just a strategy. So if people flag things, they think a bullet's more than enough or this one, I'd like to see at least a paragraph more about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that John and I don't try to do that right now. We try to bring in the things that, you know, that goals is missing, COVID's missing, the sense of we looked at the larger, that transition statement, and we try to just work on that. Um, 
And then Meg, you had the outreach. I do understand that one we could do, but we hold off of doing much more because I think if we get disparate, if everyone marks this up with other ideas, we're not having this discussion. Mm -hmm. So I'd like it to be consensus before we make a change. Okay. Okay. So yeah, similarly. Uh, go ahead. Uh, my thought was going to be when I heard you sharing, Meg, about um, that outreach. I actually kind of put that under outreach and support staff. Maybe we should make a stronger statement about empowering uh, CPOs or, you know, giving them more time. Or, so that's a bit broader discussion. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we can go through this and I think we can have a strong second draft and then see what we're still missing. But certainly we have a lot to add already. Yeah. But are you saying, John and Kathy, that we should not send you more suggestions by email? Yes, that's what I'm saying, because that's where I think we're going beyond. If we didn't talk about it now, as let's work on these things. I mean, clear, clearly you can say there's a typo. You, you know, Holly's, you keep saying CDBA when you meant to say CPA or whatever. That stuff can happen. Right. But, but I think... Um, if we are all nodding our heads, this section needs to be expanded or bro broken into two parts. That's where we could put words on it. Um, so I'll, um, I won't. Uh, there's a lot more on page three that could be said about this pilot project. We haven't talked about that. And I th we probably don't want to keep, I th I'm sensing that we're ready to move on. But this is a big topic. So Meg, why don't you, if you want to move on and pilot, we won't touch that, draft an expansion on that so we can all look at it. Okay. Okay. I totally okay, agree. Great. I think that's a big discussion. So I agree. Um, I'm, let's I just, do that let's next time. literally pop it out to something else and say, this is the wording we have, but here's more that could be discussed, whatever. And then we can have it as a separate piece. I just, I literally popped it in there because I thought maybe pilot, you know? So I'm don't, noting that in the minute, for the minutes that I will write, but not circuit, but for the next meeting, but we'll discuss a draft expansion of pilot program. And there's a second place. And, Kathy, um, and, we, and we won't touch that. We won't touch it, right. <laughs> there's another general topic that we haven't discussed. And I'm reluctant to keep being the one bringing up one more topic, but on the top of page two, I don't know if we want to certainly not talk about it now. Um, th there are, or somewhere in here, I'm not quite, um, whether we want to explore a high school based participatory budgeting project, um, which would involve a school committee and um, allocating some amount of money that would be just entirely done within the high school. So, Meg, I would just write that up because the schools right now have such, I could not drop that in here without you having explained how could that possibly work. So I, per, I think for discussion, fine, but I've just been looking at what the school budget is. They're cutting out all the after school programs. They're cutting out support for support staff. And so if you're talking about out of their budget, um, getting them involved, or if you're talking about having high school students come up with ideas, and just so everyone knows, we do have two high school students have proposed solar panels for the parking lot to the capital budgeting committee. So that absolutely, you know, engineering, like where do you see things? So if you would just write it up more, Meg, um, on, are you thinking out of the school budget or out of one of these other vehicles? That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any more comments? I think we have a plan. I'll summarize to see if it's correct. Kathy, and first of all, I want to thank Kathy again for this very, very helpful draft. I don't know how you did it because I know you were squeezed for time. Thank you. It's really helpful. Uh, the next step is John and Kathy will expand and uh, address the topics that have come up in this discussion only. Um, and I will write a section on the a pilot and on the school that I will that I will send out whenever we agree we're going to get these done by. Um, shall we try to do these for the next meeting? 
And then John and John, the other John, John and John, they're each working on a section too. So again, John Page and I will not touch those. You know, they're going to be, what is currently in this document is in the document. These will just be separate memo, whatever they look like when they come in. Okay. Uh, excuse John? me, Are you, you're saying that I'm going to provide a draft for section B? If, if you have anything more you want to put in it, go ahead and do it as just a separate. If you want to just wait, I did, I did take notes on everything you did. So if you want to have us to take a stab at saying more in B, we can do that. Um, That's your choice. I, I, could, I could take a stab at a draft or you could, I, I think it maybe makes more sense. As I said, my ideas are, are half or only quarter baked and um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have other people interpret and add or subtract from them. Okay, uh, so why don't we... And I, I, I might be tempted to put that unmentionable thing in there. Um, so... What's that? <laughs> can't giving, mention it. Giving the counselors a raise. <laughs> oh, I thought it might... Um, does John... But, but lowering taxes. Lowering, ta lowering taxes. So I think, let's say we, we take a stab at doing a little bit more and we come back and have a full discussion of that. So nobody, okay. you don't have to. Okay. Okay. Is it your understanding, Kathy, that John McCabe agreed to write a section? Yeah, he said he would take what I wrote and look at it and figure out what's bothering him and expand on it, change it around. And he had, yes, that is my understanding. He okay. And then he had some... For example, A, B, C, D, you know, a bunch of ideas, you know, that we're not being prescriptive in that one. It's wide open. Okay, got it. Okay, anything else anyone wants to say on this excellent outline before we move on? This was a really helpful discussion. It wouldn't have been possible without this draft, so. And Meg, just I just have to say, you know, I, I can, be here for a few more minutes, but it's, I think it's five o'clock and are we, are we scheduled for two hours? Well, we've been saying one and a half, but we've been going over, but let's, can we try to end in five minutes? Okay. That would be good. Really good for me. So I would like to not discuss, as I said, the timeline because it's, it's this conversation and the memo suggest a totally a somewhat different timeline and actually speeding up the draft for memo won't be well before the end of December at the rate we're going. So I will do that for the next meeting. Um, could, if we could look at the uh, draft meeting schedule. Uh, I have this every two weeks with a, skipping the week around Thanksgiving and, and you'll see around the holidays as well. Hey, could, you, could you pull it up on the screen? Because it's hard for me to do it all on this tiny laptop. All right. Let me see if I will do that. Um, open. Meeting schedule. Did you just see it there? You have to open, you have to share a new document. Go oh. back and share. Shoot. Okay. Oh, I'm not getting my share thing coming up here. Darn it. Oh, I go up here to stop share. Stop share. Okay, screen share. Yep. You got it. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay, and now I of course don't see it, but I will. There it is. All right. Um, I don't think we have to decide every meeting until May, but I wanted to have a schedule so people can get them in their, but on the other hand, if we're ready to do that, that would be great. So that these meetings get on our calendars and we plan around them. Um, um, so it's every two weeks up until th the Thanksgiving, which happens to be two weeks after November 12th. So here we would go three weeks. And at this point, we would go from December 3rd every other week. And we would skip, uh, obviously, the end of December, go to January. So my only comment is I'm not sure we're going. This is a lot of meetings. And let's see how far we get. So um, if we start drafting and then we need to meet with some staff along the way and get reports back, there might be some times where we want to do your, have these three weeks apart mm -hmm. to allow, allow time 
to for something to have happened for the next thing to happen. Yeah, that's so, a good point. So, so I'm I'm tentatively fine through November twelfth, I guess. Um, but if we can just revisit this um, when we see how far do we get by the fifteenth, um, and then what's the next big thing we want to do. Um, so that's just my only thought. We might want to do, you know, December 3rd and then not again till January 7th, but I don't know which ones, Meg, you know, to leave a bigger chunk of time. So that's where I'm just saying there may be a period of time where twice a month isn't needed because we need to set something up for something more major. Um, or if we, one of the other possibility is if we have a, this is a big Zoom forum some evening at seven o'clock. We wouldn't, that would be in lieu of a meeting, I would assume. Right, and if we were gonna do something like that to invite a larger group to react, or we were gonna, you know, these committees are not gonna to wanna to meet with us as a committee. So it may be one, person. one or two of us go over and chit chat with them and come back with a report, but we will want the report to be written up. I'm just saying that we may need more than a, two week time space between what we decide to do next. So so let's just to cut to the chase here, let's if people could mark these four yeah. on the calendar. And I'm gonna when I do the draft timeline, which I'm not gonna ask John to help me with it because you've got yourself in deep here with this rewriting of the memo. If somebody wants to help me with the timeline uh, or if I is that would be helpful if somebody wants to volunteer to read it, I'll um, the timeline might affect, would it definitely affect this uh, meeting schedule? Anybody want to be the... Well, uh, I mean, again, my feeling is it's a draft. Um, you know, I agree with Kathy, there may be things that need to be changed, but I think it's important to kind of start with a, a starting point. Good. Okay. Yeah, my one admission to be completely, as I think I told Meg is, which is true of all of us. There's just so much going on right now. So I, I will put all of these in my calendar, but in terms of my two day job hats are uh, economic development and housing. So it is a crazy time. So I'll just lay that out there now that um, I am here and I'm fully committed, but certainly it is a pretty crazy time. So I might not be able to join us for every single one of these meetings. Right, and John and I will talk, talk after this on whether how far we think we can get by the 15th. Um, do we need to do, wait till the 29th? You know, it just, it, it is literally what else is going on. Uh, I think I'm good for that, um, but I, I work fast when I'm starting from nothing. It's harder to then go back and uh, figure out how to rearrange it. Um, so, so let's, those, First four, I think, are tentatively okay with me right now. All right, so. First four look good. Okay, and um, I'm just trying to move this along here. Uh, there are no topics that I didn't foresee 48 hours ago. Uh, is there any public comment? We have no, do we have any people? I'm just looking at. Angela. I'm here and I do not see anyone in the attendees except for Elizabeth yes. Larson. Yep. <laughs> okay, so I think we just reviewed the follow up. We don't need to do that again. And our next meeting, uh, we are confirming for the 15th of October at, at 3.30. Thanks everyone. And now, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to After adjourn. Moves. Second. John, John F. seconds it. Um, and all in favor, I'm going to ask Hi. Holly. Holly. We're yeah. allowed, we don't even have to vote. We don't even vote on this in the council. So I think we can say. Okay, so. okay we all vote to adjourn. Diane Hora. <laughs> adjourn. Hi, everybody. Bye. Bye now. Thank Meet, you. Excellent all. meeting, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good job. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Bye now. Thanks, Angela.